game, especially when you're um, when you have criminal minds, like you said, and then you add the Mass Effect um, uh, mechanism yeah. into the game, where like any any decision has a consequence, and there's gonna be a oh, whole like mess of them too. And you add on uh, actual actors, you put them on. I mean, the the price would be steep, but then that would be one heck of a game, actually. Oh yeah, that yeah. would be one heck of a game. Definitely. I mean, the thing too is like everything. Everything is also like a mobile game now. Like you could just mm. they just kind of do this not great quality for the phone kind of kind of things. Mm. <laughs> or what also comes to mind is like I just think of like uh, at the casinos, like they have the slot machines. Oh yeah, like it's like oh that one's mm. a Barbie one, and that one's like a, <laughs> a Wonder Woman. Yeah, Candy Crush. That's- that's awesome. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Candy Crush, yeah. <laughs> Those lava machines, Candy Crush. Like, they are one thing, for the undies. I want to see that uh, for one PC. Thing that I just, the one thing I just wanted to add is, um, like, VR games. For me, personally, like, I have a VR right behind me here. It's the Rift S, the Oculus Rift. I think it's the best of all the ones I've ever tried and owned. Um, wow. It's just right, you know what I mean? Performance-wise, <laughs> visual but I get exhausted. Like I cannot play it more than an hour. Mm -hmm. Uh, But one thing I will say is it's getting more and more to the point where um, developers, there's this one game called Boneworks. And the Mm -hmm. game is, it's not a port. It's not Call of Duty put into VR. It's a ground up from the very beginning a VR game. The whole experience is for VR and it's amazing. Um, My middle kid, he played it he played it for maybe four days straight and beat it that's how addicting and just so it makes you think it's 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 a vr game not a conversion it's an actual vr game from the ground up it's amazing you should if you ever get a vr buy that game boneworks it's called i've been meaning it's on my list i've been meaning to play it i've been hearing a lot of good stuff about that one. Oh yeah so um i think did everybody answer everyone. that question yeah i think so yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome good Good job. Um, Good job. Uh, next Good job. panelist question is going to come from Crazy Pac Man. All right. Okay. So, I don't know. We're all gamers, right? So, uh, we all have to start somewhere. So, um, in terms of how we are now as gamers, so <laughs> what is your story? What is the game that influenced you into gaming? Okay. So, I'll be the first to answer that. Um, there's kind of a little process into that. So, um, Again, I started off playing, you know, retro games, you know, just the Mario 2D platformers or whatnot, you know, everything 2D. Then you go on, it turns into a little bit of 3D. Um, I had to go, well, we start we start from there, we go into the 3D where we play, you know, the Mario 64s. And, um, yeah, that's just casual gaming for me. But what really influenced me into gaming, after that point was Halo because um, Halo was my first shooter game that I've ever played. Um, and that influenced, influenced me into playing Call of Duty. And I played a lot more Call of Duty, all those Call of Duty uh, series, uh, every, you know, the Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, <laughs> uh, that whole thing. Um, the whole series. Went from there, then Destiny, and then Destiny 2, and here we are. Right now, it would be Overwatch, not Overwatch 2. So um, what got me into gaming is uh, Halo because it was the first FPS game I have ever played. And from then on, I started uh, branching out to different FPS games and anything shooter type like. And um, yeah, and it's got me, well, that's just where I am today when, it, when in terms of playing games. Like uh, I've played Overwatch 2 for a while, which I've kind of been taking a break. A little bit, I admit. I, I used to play a lot of Overwatch. He's but, a rager. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, low key. But you know, I the thing is, like, I I I would rage a little bit only because I want to do really good at it. And um, it's just that I feel like you know, people have been playing Overwatch now, even the new one. I mean, I think a lot of people have caught on since a lot of people can play it. It's free to play. You know, there's just a lot more like better people out there. Um. I just thought, you know, I just trying to find myself, you know, and let me see if I could find myself, my inner peace before I start playing it again. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, as terms of being influenced into gaming, yeah, Halo was the very first game. That was the 
the game that influenced me to playing um to become a gamer. Yeah, you know, I I I was bad at first. You know, my brother helped me along the way cuz he was he's he was actually better than me at Halo and he taught me all the the t- the, the tricks and strats and everything and um and I just took that and then went off with it and kind of branched out with different uh, FPS games and here we are. So nice. Uh, let's see, uh, DJ, what do you think? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, really quick again, Pac-Man, just so I know, the, like, what's my, what's, what's the experience that got me into, got me into being a gamer? Is that what you said? No, what is the game that influenced you oh. into gaming? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm the... sitting here and I'm just thinking, like, Okay, I know I talked about it, but but my answer will just will just have to be Chrono Trigger. Like, it always comes back to Chrono Trigger for me because, mm-hmm. and I, I've I've told the story about how, you know, uh, Chrono Trigger was a game that I I, I went to uh, that I wanted to play again um, uh, at a really difficult point in my life. I've told I've told the, the story about how like it, uh, it it's just. It, it like the soundtrack and everything is so good in my opinion. Um, Chrono Trigger was a game that like showed me that video games can have depth to them. It can have a long story. It can be more than just something that you can brag about your highest score to your friends with. It's something that you can like really relate to and mm-hmm. uh, and and feel like it enriches your life. But on top of that, it's like. Whenever I think about the game Chrono Trigger, I think about that small, that tiny period in my life. I was in fifth grade. Oh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in a. I I I like. I enjoyed like going to school because I had friends uh, that that were I was cool with. There was no there was no beef, no drama when I was oh. fifth grade. Mariah dropped a fire album uh-huh. that summer. I mean, that's, you know, you heard Always Be My Baby everywhere that, that summer, you know? So Chrono Trigger is just a really nice memory. You know, the ladies was digging DJ B in fifth grade, you know? So. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, uh, anyway. <laughs> hey, anyway, you guys got swag. Um, what, you, what, um, what can you say? Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding here. But, but really, anyway, it's just Chrono Trigger was a game that really made me feel like um, uh, that there is a genre that will that that really like like there's some people that for them gaming is shooters. For some people, gaming is uh, um, fighting games or uh, like uh, score chasing games, and that's totally cool. But for me, like. That's what I realized. Like gaming, I'm an RPG player. Like that. That's my genre, and so that's what got me into it. Mm. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, who are you gonna tag team? Oh, I have to. Pick. <laughs> I'm gonna pick you. Okay. Um, I had many answers that went through my head. Um, <laughs> I will say, I will say, I got, I chose to get a Switch because I was at a friend's party. And they were playing Mario Kart on the on the Switch, like on the tiny little screen, like they had it on the table. Mm-hmm. And they were, and then I tried it, and I was like, you know what? I'm pretty, I'm not bad at this, so I'm gonna. <laughs> 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 I, I like demo. I like demoed by playing Mario Kart on someone's Switch, and I was like, I'll just get one for myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, since then, I mean, I've played. I mean, on the Switch, I like to play like. Uh, Mario Kart and like Animal Crossing. I played a lot of that. I have not touched Animal Crossing in a long time. <laughs> My Islanders probably miss me. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I, what also comes to mind is like maybe it was before we even started streaming, but like we, I would just, we would hang out here and like I just play games on your PlayStation 4. And um, again, it was like, uh the beyond two souls or like all the the it was like the walking dead yeah, the telltale, the telltale those telltale okay. games um it, it was fun to just sit down and like 
choose pew, my pew. own adventure. <laughs> no, no pew pews, but <laughs> just choose maybe some slight pew pews. But um, and and like again, like I'm not. It it got me familiar with holding the controller and like the first. This is the triangle and this is the this is the square. And then I had to like switch my brain because it's not the same on the on the switch. And, um, yes. Just 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 oh. using just using DJB's PlayStation and like even the sounds of the menu screen is like oddly slightly annoying but like mostly comforting just, <laughs> just because it's. It's familiar and just you were de- you were deprived of gaming. I was so I just like you were one, I, binged, <laughs> so. I guess I mean the, I have a weird habit of just kind of like really like binging and like I was playing Lost Ark for like a minute. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like just a minute. Um, I guess it's yeah. It is just what comes to mind is just like using the console, definitely like the PlayStation and mm-hmm. the Switch. I think what what really that tells me is that you have yet to find your game that yeah. makes you a gamer. True. Sure. I think that's what it is. Wow. That's like, true. If, wow. If you I feel like this is a breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The intervention. <laughs> intervention. G A. Gamers Anonymous. Gamers Anonymous. Gamers Anonymous. We we can help way. you. We can help you. <laughs> but, I mean that's 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 me. Like yeah. we we all have different experiences with gaming and we all in our own way have come to like respect it and appreciate it and i've been trying to get resilient game to to acquiesce and play a final fantasy game oh she, Ooh, she, yeah she hasn't you know yeah right but maybe someday yeah great i think couples counseling you know <laughs> it's like anger this management my, but in my, reverse this is my intervention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh who didn't answer the question yet Uh, johnny and myself oh annie okay annie oh okay so i i did mine in three like stages so as you guys know as a kid i was all hanging out with my brother i had fomo and i still have fomo y'all know me i have fomo so i did uh asteroids and centipedes going to the arcade with my brother right um and then when my kids um, when I had my kids and then we got them game consoles and whatnot, you know, then at the time it was all Mario, everything Super Mario, right? But they were also into um, rock band and um, Guitar Hero. So I had to get involved. I couldn't do the Guitar Hero because, it, you know, I couldn't get my hands. The, 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 my dexterity was just awful. I couldn't get my hands to, to go right and I was frustrated. But I did do the rock band with them. At first, they're like, Mom, you want to sing with us? You want to be our singer? And I'm like, are you sure? So when I did become their singer, they're like, can you not sing anymore? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> man. But it's only because they're like, you know, you're like overpowering the music. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So, uh, so that was then, right? So, again, that's my second stage. Then my third stage of my life uh, happened. I'm, I haven't been a gamer more than three year, three years at best. So um, I have to say a lot of it was between me, myself and Johnny. When I first met Johnny, we, we met on Twi- Twitch Sinks, as you know. And um, and then I, I just kind of asked him, like, what game can we play together? Like, I want to start playing games because, you know, you go on Twitch and there's it's 100 percent all games pretty much. Right. Or 99 percent all games. And it's one percent of everything else. Um, or I don't know. The percentage is way off. But That's I wanted to. Do. Yeah, and I wanted to, like, play a game. You know, like, I want to go on Twitch and I want to, like, stream a game. So he and I started playing World War Z. And I had a horrible PC at the time. I had a RTX, or no, GTX 970 GPU. It was horrible. And the the fact that I even was able to move and, you know, maneuver was beyond me, I, you know, with, with such a laggy GPU. And I remember our, one of our friends, Dre, Dracy, who's on our, one of our mods, kept telling me, Annie, use your crosshairs. And I'm like, what's a crosshair? <laughs> I didn't know. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, use your crosshair, point, aim. I'm like, what's that? Honestly, I kid you not. I'm going, wait, because he, he he said that I was just shooting into oblivion, and I was, which is probably true. Uh-huh. And um, so I, you know, from then I just said, okay, I can't come on these streams or can't play these games looking like an idiot. So I wanted to hone in a little bit more on my you know my skills so 
World War Z, Johnny and I will still play it now that, you know, the gra- I have a better computer, a better com- uh, graphics card, and I can, you know, actually maneuver on my PC. But um, it just wasn't my game. It wasn't something that I wanted to wake up to, you know, and go, oh, you know, after I do all my chores or after I do all my errands, I want to come home and play World War Z. It wasn't that, it w- that wasn't it. So what was it and how I discovered it was totally by accident. I just remember when Valorant did come out, when it did, um, it was so brand new that only a few people could have the key, right? The stream key, basically, um, or stream code, rather. So I think, I, uh, and I asked him today, uh, Larzy, do you remember giving me the code for Valorant? He goes, I think maybe. So, And I had it, honestly, for a whole freaking year before I even opened the game and then it wasn't until like maybe what uh, a little over a year no a year and a half ago how long how old is valorant like a little over two years right so two and a half years years. okay so literally about a year and a half ago i said okay you know another girl and i she and i just said we need to have a game that we can play like all the time what could we try we tried Fortnite at the time when it was building right and I hated building, so I'm like, no, this is not the game for me. I don't know if this this isn't it. This is the th- this isn't the, this is the this isn't the attraction I wanted. I I don't feel you know like I need to play this game, until we opened up Valorant, and then it became like, oh, 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 uh-huh. and Voodoo, who's in this stream, and Hi Bye, who's the other mod, did a history. They said they they went back to my history in Valorant and they said at the time that I was playing and maining Sage and and Jet of all of all characters of all agents. I'm like, I was. And they said, yes, you didn't even play um, Viper until you unlocked her. And when I unlocked her, all hell broke loose because that was it. That was I was forever Viper. And that is my game. And I know I've only been doing. Then I let you try. <laughs> yeah, see, hi, I said, then I let you, he, he let me try Viper because Viper was his main and I stole Viper from him. I literally <laughs> stole Viper from him. And I, I remember, you know, when I, once I became, you know, familiar with Viper, that was it. That's all she wrote. I, that's all I wanted to play. So I've only been a gamer at best, maybe two and a half years, uh, um, so, or yeah, no, maybe a year and a half. I don't know, two years ish. And so that is the game that has influenced me to, to want to play games all the time. So now I'm trying, I'm trying to be a little bit more versatile. And so I said, okay, let me, let me get a switch. Let me, let me see what the hype is. Again, here's my fourth stage of FOMO. Um, so I got a switch and I'm trying to play games on the switch and these guys hate me because I'm terrible on Overcooked <laughs> too, you know. Over, <laughs> oh God. I, over yeah, no. <laughs> I no. burn everything, <laughs> but it's freaking <laughs> hilarious. I pee my pants because it's so funny. So that it, so my game <laughs> that got me started was World War Z, but you know we still play it occasionally, but it's not the game. That's not my go-to game. So obviously my one influencer game that has stuck with me and will continue to stick with me is Valorant, and that's the game. That I play, so <laughs> we don't hate you. We have a blast. <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard. I, I, I. Uh, if you want to hear some high pitched laughing, come watch me play Overcooked too. <laughs> uh, Johnny, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, I don't know how to answer this. To be honest, <laughs> I wouldn't say a, there was any particular game that made me into a gamer. I would say it is just the competitive nature of my family, whether it be my sister or my dad. It's kind of like we grew up with the in television, and we didn't even have other consoles till later. And a lot of those games are very competitive, whether it be. <laughs> Racing games, sports games. <laughs> sports games, I think, is some of the most competitive games there is because you don't know. There's no level. You don't know whether you're going to have a good game, a bad game, what the outcome is going to be. So <laughs> I wouldn't, I couldn't really pin a particular game that made me a gamer. I think it's just the competitive nature within my family. Yeah, you are. Against each other. Family. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, that's the game. That really made me a gamer. Really enjoy it. Enjoy the victory, even you know, accept the defeat. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> all a part of it. Yeah. 
Okay. That was a short and sweet answer. I was expecting you to mm. elaborate like this long-winded novel, but all good. All good. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't pin it on one game. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, that's the mark of a true gamer, right? Because you don't, you can't yeah. pin it down to one. Yeah. Short and awesome. sweet, just short like how sweet. I like my coffee. Uh, <clears throat> what? Short and sweet. Okay. I'll short drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> hydrate, <you> hydrate. <laughs> All right. Did everyone answer that question then, right? Yeah. That was it? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little break for a second. We are going to do our fun facts section. Okay. So this is all pertaining to video games then and now. I'll start with the first one. Uh, fun fact. Fun fact one. The Game Boy was the first game console in space. Wow. That's right. The Game Boy. The Nintendo Game Boy. In 1993, Mm. the Game Boy's Tetris was the first ever game played in space. And the Game Boy, the first console played in space. It came aboard the Soya TM-17 rocket meeting the MIR space station, Russian cosmonaut Sobrov A. Alansanstri was the first to play it. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna put. Well, like the Game Boy could just like do it could handle the 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 air pressure or whatever. Oh, and... you oh, know what? I'll add yeah. on to. Th- I, I'll actually add on to that. Um, I went to I think years ago. I went to the Nintendo store in New York City, <laughs> and they displayed the Game Boy that was that that was in a. Uh, it was actually it was going through a Iraqi missile assault. What? So, yeah, the Game Boy was in that building, and then there were a bunch of missiles being dropped. Uh-huh. And it hit that building, and ever since, that Game Boy was still able to work. It, like <laughs> the, outside, the outside of the Game Boy was just, like, messed up, but it's still playable. Wow. It's giving Nokia. The yeah. Nokia phone. Nintendo, 90s mm-hmm. Nintendo consoles were solid, man. Like they were solid. It's, it's it's a meme that an N sixty four you could like toss that off a bridge. I believe it. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, fun fact number two. The game Pac-Man, the most popular game of the 80s, I would say. Pac-Man could have been named Puck-Man. Oh. Oh. Due to the character. We have some graphics. Due to the game character's resemblance to a hockey puck. Wait a minute now. Its developers initially planned to name the game Puck-Man. However, they later changed it to Pac-Man because of the concern that vandals may deface the name. (laughs) Get it? Puck? Wow. Wood rams with puck? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. luck oh, man. Puck <laughs> man. No. no, all I can say is my name could have been Crazy Puck Man. No, so my that goodness. That would have been a very, very um, crazy <laughs> situation. Alternate that was universe, but that's what it is. Just, just don't <laughs> add a Philippine <laughs> accent, please. There's, yeah, a, there's a very <laughs> That's called that. Hey, bro, hey, bro oh, I man. beat the score. Ah, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's up? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Hey, Johnny, oh, I just posted the uh, a, a photo of the Game Boy one that you just talked about. Can you talk about oh, okay. that? Yeah. So, ch- talk. Okay. There it there's, is. There's the Game photo. Game Boy in space. The Game Boy it's in space. It's just, like, space. straight up in space. Like, they're just. I'll do sound oh. effects, guys. Just raw space. Is this real? Is this? Is that the actual? Is that an actual screenshot? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> pretty cool? That, 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 looks, that, from the... that looks poetic, actually, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. That looks pretty awesome, actually, right? Yeah. Uh, if I was going to do a video game book, that would be the, the, the cover art. You know? I mean, yeah. I'm they, with... They sent an astronaut <laughs> that did it for the grams. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> I I uh, I'm with Riz on that. Uh, did it withstand like all the pressure and and the atmosphere? I mean, I'm I know that they're in, you know, a, a pressurized, well, oxygenated chamber. But I'm just curious, you know, something of that nature. Does 
does it, 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 because it didn't, it wasn't, you know, NASA approved, you know, device. So, so to speak, mm-hmm. did it, I wondered if it really did or not NASA, but you know, engineered space engineered to prove, but yeah. I wonder if it did withstand that pressure. I'm assuming it did. I want right? to know where it is now. Yeah, where that's a that good one. Boy? Right? That's got to be Still worth a space. lot of money. Still Forget the moon rocks. I want <laughs> it's the floating. Game Boy. It's a meteor. <laughs> I went to space, right? It probably survived it, too. <laughs> they forgot it. <laughs> it's out there with the, with the N64. It's that's probably in Mars weird. somewhere. It's probably in Mars somewhere. He Still left working. it. He yeah. left it on the moon or somewhere, you know. All right, and here's, here's, the, here's a graphic of the Puck Man. <laughs> Don't puck man. Puck man. Mm. Wait, and so I, I, I could totally see how easy it would be to vandalize. So that. easy. Just yeah. one, one, so one easy. copy, one second. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking okay. hilarious. All right. But it makes sense because when his mouth is closed, he looks like a hockey puck, right? Mm. Yeah. So I see where they were going Does on the design. Does Tyler have a nose like that? Or is it? No. I think it was just added. <laughs> It's so in exaggerated. That terrible cartoon they had in the, in the 90s. Yeah, he did. Remember that terrible cartoon? But I think um, the one, uh, I think they did have the nose still for, I think it's just really a really small nose. It's just never that huge of a nose. But I think they added it to the Pac Man now. That's a real question. Hey, it's just, so, it's Pinocchio, you liar. Just kidding. <laughs> it is. Hey, Buck Man is lying. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh third fun fact. And I think we kind of um we kind of talked about this uh before in the past. Studies have shown that playing Tetris can curb sex, drug, and food cravings. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because the physical and visual representation of fixing things to <laughs> To fit just right gives us the illusion of having our shit together. (laughs) Or maybe it's something else. Nevertheless, it's proven that Tetris helps lessen impulsive behavior, carnal desires, no more. Carnal desires. Okay, so I play a lot of Tetris, right? So I'll believe that it does kind of curve the food (laughs) cravings. (laughs) <laughs> but i gotta say though Let me i do <laughs> it's confession <laughs> time <laughs> okay, like, okay like yeah so i happen to bring okay loki i bring my switch to work i play it during break okay. <laughs> okay to me i think it's just more of i think it to me it's more of it's more of like i think it, it's it relieves stress that's all it does. Oh, like it just okay. kind of, if you, you know, say just, so. <laughs> yeah, it it it's just the fact that you're you're <laughs> beyond the the whole the chaos in the game. It actually does have a little satisfaction of like you know going through you know getting all these lines together and everything like that, and just like really dominating in it. So like it's just um, to me, I think personally, it's just uh, it's just. <clears throat> It lessens the stress, you know, and uh, it, it to me, it does help a little more with my work, with what I do, because you know, I'm I'm more of a factor. Uh, I'm a, a warehouse worker, and you know, just building, you know, boxes on top of boxes on top of boxes. It actually does help out a little bit. So <laughs> you put your touch of skills to that, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Building. So boxes. it does help a bit. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Hope you guys are enjoying these fun facts. I posted them there in the um, uh, Twitch chat uh, for your visual um, reading pleasure, rather. All right. And I think I have the last. Pleasure, she said. Shush. (laughs) (laughs) I have the last fun fact, which is I don't have a graphic for this. Um, But speaking of Tetris, did you know that there are over 70 unique platforms or versions of Tetris as of 2023, 70. And I can attest to that because the other night, remember when, when we're this, I think it was just this week or last week, we were trying to play some retro games, um, Pac-Man. We were uh, on the, not the Game Boy, but the Nintendo, the NES, I think we were. And I was trying to look for the original Tetris, the one that, you know, I played as a kid. 
and you go, yeah, you should be able just to type in Tetris. OMG. I typed in Tetris and I was for days scrolling down going, oh my gosh, really? Seriously? And I didn't count 70, but I did quite, you know, mm-hmm. count quite a few. So I believe it. And there, there, there are many versions of Tetris, mm-hmm. but my version of Tetris was n- the original when it came out. And I remember mm-hmm. my brother and I would like wake up in the morning and go, Oh my God, I had a dream about Tetris. Oh my God, me too. Like I would mm-hmm. in my dream visualize these, those little, what are they called? Blocks coming down and we're turning them in our sleep, Tetris you know? Windows. Yeah. T- turning them in our seat, turn left, right? No, you know, and then just trying to, you know, clear lines. So yeah, I believe mm-hmm. that there are 70, at least 70, right? Um, I could totally attest to that because um, out of that 70, I probably have like maybe 12 or 15 of them. So <laughs> spanning do. across from, you know, NES Those to are the Xbox to yeah. the PS4 <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the Switch. Yeah. I could attest to that. I probably have like 15 out of the 70. Oh, and there's, there's a lot of different versions. Right. Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, guys, um, uh, for you video game collectors, you probably already know this, for the Sega Genesis console, or the Sega Mega Drive, depending on US or not, uh, for the Sega Genesis, the most expensive cartridge is Tetris on the Sega Genesis. Wow. It's worth a minimum okay. $16,000 for the cartridge, up to $30,000. It's one of the most rare and wow. sought-after gaming collector cartridges for 16-bit. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah. See? And the game I sucks. And the game sucks too, but it's it's so <laughs> rare, you know. It's 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 a huge deal on the market for collectors. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a movie about Tetris actually That's coming right. out yeah, too. I was thinking about that. There's a live action Tetris movie coming out. What? I saw. I, yeah, I, I I saw the night. There was one about the Air Jordan. They made a movie about Air Jordan. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Oh and yeah, yeah. Then I saw the Tetris one. I'm just like, oh my god, they're running out of ideas. <laughs> not, not that I don't. Not that I don't want to watch it or anything. But this... can't they create something new? Why are they How talking about movie? stuff that really it's, happened? It's a true story though. About you know what? It? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the most entertaining movie I would like to see them uh, do for a video game, Frogger. Really? <laughs> they should do a Frogger movie. Would it be a horror game? <laughs> like that would be interesting to me. Like I, I, I would imagine oh, that. Okay, it, road, right? uh, yeah. what's it? Illumity? Illum- uh, like uh, whoever the the production who did the uh, Mario Brothers movie. I would oh, imagine them doing I a Frogger movie. Frogger is a Sega game, isn't it? Sega made Frogger. Frogger. Uh, Pretty I sure. thought it was an Atari game at first, or a Sega um, Master System. I don't know, but I like, think Frogger's. It was originally developed by Sega. Mm-hmm. I would, would like to wrong. see that one. Like, I would be really interest, uh, interested in too. Who would voice Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> that's the case. That would be and, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be Chris Pratt. Oh no, it's yeah. not. It's oh, Konami. It has to be Chris Pratt. Oh, Konami okay. made Frogger. Never mind. It had nothing oh, to do Konami. with Sega. Yeah. Before Sid. Contra, there was Frogger. Contra would be a good movie. Actually. Oh hell yeah! Contra oh. would be a good movie. Contra the, the movie. Contra? How long? Mm-hmm. Contra and before movie. before the game starts, it's like up, down, left, right, A, B, yeah. start, <laughs> left, one. You know. Oh. Yeah, thirty lives in the beginning. It does the little code. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, that would be a great movie. All right, so this concludes our fun facts for this episode. <laughs> Yay! Thanks Hope everybody enjoyed who it. contributed. Yay! We'll have many okay. more fun facts <clears throat> in our. I didn't contribute. Okay, so Future. I think we're, we're just going to do what, one question per panelist, right, for this. Because I think we, we might have more than one, but we'll just stick to one. Is that cool with everyone? Sure. Oh. Wait, you didn't ask right. your question yeah. yet. I'm next, actually. So oh, okay. <laughs> this next one is my question. Uh, it's a weird question, but it's relevant to video games then and now. And I'd like to get everyone's opinion on it. Mm-hmm. So back in the early 1990s, games like Doom and Splatterhouse hit the market and parents began complaining that video games are having a negative effect on the young kids. Hence the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, Video Game Rating Board Service was born. And it required a label on video games to measure how violent and destructive the game is based on their rating system. Do you think that video games then and now have any influence on violent and destructive behavior on our kids? 
So as most of you know, if you buy a video game, like let's say you buy a cartridge, there's going to be a little rating on there called ESRB. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I remember when that when that happened, it was really Doom was what spiked it all. Doom wasn't really on any consoles, but it was on the PC, and people were just having a field day. Like, look at all the violence, you know what I mean? Um, what is, I'd like to get your, your guys' opinion. And same thing with chat. Do you think video games have an effect on the behavior of violent and destructive behavior on kids? And does the yes. ESRB even it's work? Ironic. I mean, hmm. we'll start with Annie. That's a loaded question, y'all. Um, okay. Talk, so. Okay. You have kids. I so, do like... have kids. I I can say this. Oh, sorry. Let me just post that there for everybody. Is that the number four? Okay. So um, I do have kids, and and I can honestly say um, that it does have some effect on 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 kids. Um, I don't really know how early we or how young the kids were when we introduced gaming to them. It was you know enough early enough where they were able to understand and that was kind of key because we had to un- we had to kind of teach them you know wrong from right of course um real versus f- fantasy um so i think it i'm not gonna and i'm not bashing please don't take this as bashing you know any parents out there i'm not parent bashing but i think it's just you know you you the parent have to be restrictive on what you um introduce to your children video games especially um or you know in this case video games and other things but um you know restrict them restrict time perhaps restrict um even with whom they play with sometimes you know if they're you know single player games where you can play you can isolate them at home kind of thing maybe maybe that be better versus if they were to have access to online gaming or or shareable type of games um, per se. Um, I think they, they can discover that later when they get more social, when their their social skills are a, a, a bit more fine tuned, I guess. Um, because with when they're kids and they're learning still even just how to be social in a in a school setting versus in a game setting, that's two different kinds of um, you know environments. I think you just have to be really mm, you really have to be aware of 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 the kinds of games that they're playing, so having the ESRB uh, ratings, um, I think, are very very helpful because you have it in movies. Why not have it in games? I think it's fair that you have it in games. So I think um, having that is is uh, key to the types of games that you introduce your kids to, and then um, you know be just have um, discernment and some discretion as to w- at the age at which you introduce them. So um, to each his own, I want to say, but also have some you know wherewithal with what you are pr- um mm. introducing them to so that's okay. my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> yeah feel it. i mean because what comes to mind too is well um i know like for, for dj and i like our parents did not grow up with video games like they did not they were much older when they started using computers and like technology and like consuming media um, so what we always talk about is like when we have kids, like we, we would, we're a little more aware of what's out there and, um, and the, and I hope that like, because we know technology that it's easier to, it, to introduce it to, to kids and mm-hmm. like, and be able to like monitor it a lot better. Um, but I also, I mean, I think like tech, I mean not just video games but like technology itself like there are a lot of setbacks but there's also a lot of benefits like we uh we talk about VR a lot and um it's I think it's cool like how much it opens up accessibility that you can be sitting in your own chair with some headset but then you can go to Disneyland or you can go to some place and learn something like it's a it's a tool that can be used to like benefit people and to like uh provide education and like um give give people who otherwise wouldn't be able to have that kind of access or experience to do those things um right so and then and then yeah like the again like the pandemic 
was it, like that's the time where a lot of people got into gaming and connected with each other. That's why that's how we all ended up here doing right. um, <laughs> a podcast and talking about these kinds of things. But it's it's a it's a good way to connect people. Um, and yeah, I mean maybe maybe some of that bad rap has kind of kind of changed over time. I don't know. I would hope so. Very nice. Okay. What about you guys, uh, well, Johnny? Um. Okay. My opinion is, bad kids, bad kid. Okay, game's not gonna make kids <laughs> bad. Okay. I, I remember it. when I was about twelve or maybe eleven years old, my grandma wanted us to go to catechism. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You know, so I don't want to get all religious and all that, but. I went to catechism. Me and my sister both went to catechism. We couldn't be together because she's older than me. So she was in a different group, and I was in this other group. And, man, some of the most worst kids on the face of the earth. I mean, they needed they needed God's help. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> were at catechism. Almost like the parents just threw them there like, you deal with them. That's so that kid's a bad kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A video games is just. Um, I, I agree with uh, like what Largie said. I don't think video games, they they really influence per, per se. I think parents need to be proactive about what their kids are playing. You should be that way. If you're a parent, you should be doing that anyways. You should be well aware about what they're what they're doing. But I don't think a game, a video game, whether it be console, PC, whatever. I don't think the game itself. Um, makes a non-violent kid destructive and violent out of the blue you are what you are these kids that are destructive and violent they're already that way period you know so i understand why you know i agree partially with what eddie had to say you have it for movies um whether it's going to be r rating pg you know it's so i i agree with that aspect of having a rating on the game but i don't think games alone basically influence violent or destructive behavior in kids. The kid is either already violent and destructive or not, you know? That's my opinion. Okay. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> good, good, well, good. Let's see. I mean, I, th I think I'm just going to keep it, you know, a little short and sweet here. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll second, you know, everybody because um, I don't think games do influence, uh, you know, destructive behavior but i mean the i don't think it games do influence that but i think there's gonna be of course there's how there has to be outside influences of that so like definitely you know the parents that have to make sure that they you know they don't uh, it's 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 the responsibility that their kids don't get into that kind of um, influence <laughs> in the first place so i mean games are games you know and um it shouldn't be a reason for you know anybody you know, anyone's um no um decision in life or anything like that like oh like you know it, it shouldn't be anything destructive but i mean at the same time um maybe when it comes to playing games you know addictively maybe that might be uh, that might be a um that, that definitely is more of an issue than you know than someone, rather a kid or a dog, you know, have that influence. Like, oh man, I gotta like, you know, start smashing and, you know, murdering people or anything like that. But like, you know, it's just. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, kids with uh, in games and doing stuff like that, I mean, it's it it should be like the parents like that should be watching out for that. But uh, you know, yeah, it's, 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 there has to be at least like some outside, you know, influences if yeah. if they ever are like that then you know i don't think games are going to be like any influence for that i mean that would that'd be kind of an alibi but i that's I mean, what, I mean so. what also does come to mind is like the toxicity in games though that's what i was gonna say okay <laughs> I, I was gonna say this yeah. uh, sorry were you were you done back now? coming or? from a overwatch player <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. that's, see that's why i took a break let's <laughs> see so I would say, like, rather than 
what like is in the video games, I would be more if I were a parent, I would be more concerned about the people that they would come across when playing these games. Like that's what my concern would be more of. You know, I like I would rather my I, I would way rather have my kid like pick up hookers in, in their car in GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> rather the way than, this sentence just came out. Rather was, than rather than <laughs> chat with pro- potential pedos. Yeah. On on, uh, on uh, uh, Maple Story or whatever I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. So. I- I'd rather be on Oregon Trail fight uh, fight of malaria. I mean, I'd rather do that. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so yes, I, I do think that there is to, something to be said about like um, people, young people being desensitized a bit um, to violence because of like the constant exposure. Um, I think that there. I know that there has been some studies that were done where where uh, um, they 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 found that individuals who played violent video games like shooters uh, they they uh, they measured their like facial responses hmm. and uh, scientifically determined at least through this one study that people tend people had less empathetic uh, uh, facial expressions because uh, because they played more violent video games, and I and I feel like that that makes a lot of sense because you play these games and you might say something to somebody uh, in this game that you would never say to somebody like oh. just casually, just normally, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But so I guess in in some ways I feel like maybe there is something to be said about violence and um and and constant uh Mm. uh just i don't know um just just any anything that looks and that can be like can trigger bad behavior um however we have a rating system now like the srb which i i agree with johnny like i think it's it's been more helpful than hurtful Mm -hmm. um so uh so there's that, yeah. You just gotta, you just gotta know what you're consuming. That's all. And I think we also <laughs> should also make a point that like we should um, be more uh, as like gamer culture should <clears throat> move towards like holding some of these uh, developers to to uh, to Again. better standards, mm-hmm. not just making like mindless destruction games and like games that also like may have like games like The Last of Us, which talk about like it has a lot of violence in it but it also talks about like the the uh the significance of life and like and and that you know violence is not like just senseless it actually has uh repercussions right i want to i'm sorry i just have to say this real fast i'm sorry what dj what dj just said right now made me think of a joke my friend told me like um i guess my one of my friends he used to shoplift back in the 90s you know (laughs) (laughs) and he would shoplift music right and then he gets home to play the 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 tape or the cd right and it's the clean version you know (laughs) 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 he shoplifted the wrong version right oh my goodness Anyway, I'm sorry. I want to add to what DJ was saying and to what everybody was saying too, because um, you know the 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 fact that they we have our avatars, we have our our quote unquote profiles, our gamer names gives us gives kids not just kids, even us, um, adults, anybody anonymity basically so where you would not act one way in a you know say a public setting or a more you know. Uh, let's go with that public setting you have now you you, you're kind of living that fantasy life right where you can act a certain way and you know um, pop off at the mouth anytime you want to or be the way that you are toxic Uh, we we do that around a lot um, because you have that anonymity so I think that having that too um, because you you don't have your your identity quote-unquote 
blasted out there you they they can't put you know the name with the face the face with the name or they can't figure out who's who or what not yeah it's uh, they have that anonymity they have the ability to be able to to act a certain way so i'm not saying that's good or bad i'm just saying i'm I'm making a point that you know that because of that you know you we've all seen that movie what player uh ready 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 player one ready player is that what it is Uh ready player one i mean Right when you see the movie, when you learn about these people's names, and then you see their fate, the fate, even though they were, it was an animated movie, it was like, oh, that's who you are, right? And then they find out that they're actually better than, say, their character. I'm just making a point. So uh, I just wanted to throw it out there. I I had a point, honestly, (laughs) but the more we kept talking, I'm like, I'm gonna lose my point. So yeah, there it went. Anyways, but to be honest, Annie, they could crack down on it. They could um, pretty easily in the gaming community if they wanted to. All they have to do, and I think one or two games had done this before, if they catch you cheating, let's say, right. or, or, or you know, uh, using a illegal copy of the game, they ban your GPU um, um, from their servers. Oh, interesting. Mm, okay. So let's say it's the kid, you know, talking smack or using racist words on the game platform, and then now dad's, you know, he's on his dad's computer. Now that computer's banned from all these developers games guess what that kid's gonna get his butt kicked okay he's gonna get a spanking he's probably gonna be you know what i mean because every no it's the truth it's like there's no accountability if they wanted to add accountability to it you could do it in in a month you know with the the software because if you get your gpu banned from all games that are ubisoft let's say oh dad's gonna find out and dad is not gonna be happy you know what i mean right it's the truth the hardware in your system, everything's traceable. They can block your IP address. Uh, your NIC card has a MAC address where basically it's like an address that never changes. They want to ban it. I mean, can. to and some degree, if you're putting threats out there, I, ca- I get it. They're going to find you, right? They're going to figure who you are. And they're, you know, even with the anti cheats and all the, the way in which we report. Um, well, the behavior thing is what I'm talking ba- about. Okay. When and they harass people, sure. they use racist. Mm-hmm. remarks openly on the games um if there was accountability put in place it would stop pretty quickly in, in those particular communities i'm just saying they could do it if right. they wanted to yeah they choose true. not to true that it's a touchy subject and we could go on right forever about about yeah. this which is one of the questions why i took it away i'm like i don't think i'm gonna bring this question up because yeah this subject i think is um you know opens up a can of, can of worms and there have been very uh, um, a, a ton of studies. Um, even when I was in school, um, in grad school, we had to study about video games and uh, the way in which it affected kids bec- for a paper I wrote. So, yeah, there was a lot of um, research that went um, in, even in the in the journals that have um, medical or psychological tracings to video games of why certain people acted a, a, a certain way. So, you know, it's it's very controversial, but. Glad we were able to touch on it a little bit today. Mm-hmm. Um, did Riz, did you answer the question on whether or not you think video games influence? It's in words, I think. So yeah, you kind of. Yeah. Don't, you be, don't be mean or else I ban you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and she will, too. She's she's <laughs> u- ultimate she mod. Will. <laughs> she will. She will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, a panelist with a question, it's Riz. Riz Aline. Okay, let's, we can, I guess we could kind of like lightning round this one a little bit, but yeah, my can. question was about consoles and uh, are you guys trying to, do you feel like you want to get more consoles or do you like what you have so far? Uh, we don't have a PS5. I don't know if we want to get a PS5. <laughs> we haven't had that conversation. Uh, I'll probably get one when the when the Slim comes out or something. You know. But yeah, it's just you know we're mm. trying to keep up with all the all the devices and the computer and the phone and where you, where are you mm. guys at with? Or my birthday. I'll, I'll start if it's okay. My birthday. Uh, go for it. Anyway. So post, um, post I'm the, not impressed with the new consoles. Just a all. second. Pose the question one more time so I can put it in chat. Oh. Um, Share your thoughts on consoles. Okay. Consoles, how you feel. Consoles, how you feel. 
How do you feel? The concepts feel very sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll start with this one. Okay, um, I was on the fence about getting a PS5. Now, I knew there was going to be a new VR for our PlayStation, and I was hoping it would work on the PS4, but apparently it only is going to work on PS5. But here's why I didn't buy one. Um, I do still play the PS4. I have the VR for the PS4. But to be honest, um, the console, they're not very impressive. With mm -hmm. the, By the time they launched the new console for PS5 and the new Xbox, they're already... I mean, my the, the the systems I built for my kids that they have, uh, that they have is way outperforms the PS5 by a pretty big margin. Don't let the numbers fool you or the the big boast about oh it's got a, you know it's got what uh, PCIe SSD drive blah blah <coughs> loads fast. No 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 those the the specifications on the PS5 and the new Xbox is no good compared to. Any any system you could probably build, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why? Why would I just have a paperweight basically? Yeah. And then you gotta buy all the new games that are PS five. I don't think any are compatible, are they? So it's mm -hmm. to me it's a waste of money. I'd rather just yeah. buy it on and I'll show you I'll tell you why. Um like Pac Man, he mentioned Destiny and I hate yeah. Destiny and this is why I'll tell you I hate <laughs> Destiny. You end up buying the game four or five times because every season they nerf you. So everything you had that you wasted so much time progressing, it's worthless. Mm -hmm. And then if you're on console, you have to buy it all over again. And it's expensive. It's yep. like $59. It's not like, oh, it's a $20. Um, no, you're paying for the whole game all over again. Yeah, and, and I'll second this too. <laughs> like whatever game or version you get from Destiny – it becomes free later on. So <laughs> whatever well, version you get, like, or DLC you get. Uh, you can still play the game, just not the new content. Yeah, just you know not what the I mean? new content. You'll yeah. see it, and it's like, ah, oh, you can't play, you know. Uh. But this is why, this is, what, this is the thing that really pisses me off so about console pay. versus yeah. PC, okay? Preach. Give example. Let's say me, I want to play with Pac-Man. We're going to play Destiny, right? If I don't get PlayStation Network or, you know, the PS4 Pass, whatever the hell they call it, it's like $12 a month or whatever. If I don't buy that extra pass, I can't even play with Pac-Man, even though I didn't buy the new content. So I can't even play online with other people unless I get the PlayStation Plus, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's $12 a month. It's $12 a month, okay? It's a now marketing PC, ploy. It's a marketing no, no, ploy. The same game, though. Yeah. The same game, Destiny 3 or Destiny 2, whatever whatever they're at. Destiny 2 on PC. I don't need to buy no special pass to play with him online. So mm -hmm. why would I play it on this platform that's going to charge me more every month? Makes no sense. Yeah, I'll even add on go. to that. What's even worse now, um, I've noticed that there are like the new generation games, the PS5 and the Xbox series, whatever. Um there are some games that are compatible to play with the PC. Now, here's a catch here. Like, PCs, some can play with the PS5s and the Xbox Series uh, consoles, but they cannot, they're not compatible with the PS4, to play with the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, it's kind of why, you know? <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's kind of odd. They, they have the new generations that are compatible to play with, like cross, uh, to do cross platform, or actually it's called cross generational um, games. So it has to stay within that generation. And while the PS4 and the PS4 and the Xbox ones only could stay within their um, level. So I kind of, to me, that's I kind of second um, Johnny with that. Like I was gonna get a PS5, but I mean, there's no point of getting it if I still have my PS4. You know, all working well. So it's just more, and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, it's I'll, I'll, it's an op, it's a it's a very optional thing. It's not really something that I'm really looking. Well, this to is getting. the way I, I like to put it to people on the fence about buying a PS5. Have you guys heard of the video card called the GTX 1080? Yeah. Right. GTX 1080. You know, it's it's a it came out five six years ago. It was a really popular card. Then they have a TI version, which is even more. 
if you buy a PS5, it basically has that five-year-old GPU in it. That's the equivalent of the GPU processing power of a PS5. So I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not trying to, you know, if you want to buy, buy it. Be happy with it. But, like, it's not it's not worth it to me. That's just my opinion. Well, the, whenever someone says that, though, like, I, 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 I feel like it's 